More and more children are out of school, but parents don't want math learning to stop. They're turning to Mathnasium at home. Real-time math instruction tailored to your child's exact educational needs. It's the same face-to-face -face live instruction used in our centers for over 15 years, now on a computer. Your child can keep their math skills sharp, catch up, or soar ahead, from home or anywhere with an internet connection. To learn if Mathnasium at Home is right for your child, visit mathnasium.com slash at home. Mathnasium at Home, changing lives through math. Hello everyone, welcome to today's Mathnasium Schoolhouse. My name is Kevin, and today we are going to be talking about odds and probability. Uh, so before we get started, we're going to let a couple of other people join before we get going. So if you would just let me know uh, what's your name, what grade you're in, uh, maybe a little bit about where you're from. If you're a Mathnasium student, let us know that as well. That would be that'd be really cool to know. And uh, we will go ahead and get started. All right, so when we're talking about probability, we want to look at the different likelihoods that things are going to happen. So if we're talking about something that's certain, it's 100%, we know that it's going to happen. Uh, something that's likely is between 50% and 100% that it'll happen. If it's equally likely, that means that it's 50-50, it's, it's, it's a toss-up um, whether or not it will happen. Unlikely, it's between 0 and 50%, uh, which means it probably will not happen. And impossible is 0%, so it will never happen. So a little bit of a definition when we're talking about probability. So let's review that here and talk about these couple of different scenarios. So the probability of the sun, the, prob the probability that the sun will rise is 100%. So when we say that is certain, likely, equally likely, unlikely, or impossible. So how would we describe the probability that the sun is going to rise? Let me know what you think in the comments. Again, is that going to be, are we certain the sun's going to rise? Is it likely that the sun will rise? Is it equally likely? Is it unlikely or is it impossible that the sun will rise? What do we think? We know that it's 100%, and in the last slide we talked about 100% means it's certain. We are certain, we are 100% that the sun will rise tomorrow. The probability that it will rain is 2 out of 5, 2 fifths probability that this, it's going to rain. When we talked about on our scale, on the last page, we were looking at 0%, up to 50%, 50% being our equally likely, above 50%, and then 100%. So we know that two-fifths is more or less than one-half. It's the first part we need to figure out. Is two-fifths more or less than one-half? less than one half. So knowing our different definitions here, we know that that means it's going to be unlikely that it will rain tomorrow. It's not impossible. It's not zero percent. But it's not very likely that it's going to rain at, at two-fifths. Good job. Okay, probability that turtles will fly is zero. Well, we know that zero is impossible. It is impossible. turtles will fly. Last one today, the probability that you will see a bird is 0 0.84. Well, when we looked at our scale on the last slide, we know that anything above 50% we said is likely and 0.84 is greater than 0.5 or greater than half, greater than 50%. So it's likely in this scenario that we will see a bird. Great, nice job. Okay, so because we can talk about fractions, I'm sorry, we talk about probability as either a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage, we want to get a little bit of review 
in working those three different types of probabilities, um, looking at, at transitioning those numbers from one to another. So if we're looking at a fraction of zero, how would we write that as a decimal? How would I write a fraction of zero as a decimal? 0, 0.0, and what percentage would that be? Zero. Pretty easy one to start off with. Okay, so let's talk about 32 hundredths. Our decimal is 32 hundredths. So as a fraction, and I'm going to actually write that one over here. 32 one hundredths. Is that the simplest form that I can write that fraction in? Can that fraction be reduced? I know they're both even numbers. I know they're both divisible by two. So we could also say that that is 16 fiftieths. And, and I know that I can do that one more time. And I get to eight twenty-fifths. Can I reduce that fraction any further from eight twenty-fifths? What is that? As small as we can reduce the fraction down. Very good. It's as low as we can reduce that fraction. So that's what we have there. And for our percentage, again, we said it was 32 out of 100. We know that the word percent means for each 100. So I have 32 for each 100. So that would be 32 percent. Okay, we can go ahead and do the next one. 32% we would write as 32 hundredths. And our fraction, we'll make the space over here on the side to see if we can reduce this. 13 hundredths, can we reduce that at all? Can we reduce 13 over 100 at all? No, we cannot. Nice job. And that's because 13 is a prime number. So we can't share any factors with 100. Good job. All right. One tenth. We have one in the tenth place, one tenth. And how would we write that as our percentage? One tenth is the same thing as ten hundredths. So it's ten percent. Nice easy one here for number five. Five hundredths, sorry, fifty hundredth hundredths is fifty percent. When we talk about 50% as a fraction, that's one that most of us know is half. 100% as a decimal, 100% as a decimal would be what? Well, we can think about the fraction first. I have 100 for 100. So what would that be as a decimal? Be one, it's a whole. Nice job. Three quarters is a decimal that most people probably know as 75 hundredths, which gives us 75%. A little bit trickier here for the next one. You might be picking up on a little bit of a pattern here when we're moving from decimal to fraction. I'm sorry, from decimal to percent. We're just moving that decimal point back and forth. All right, so we'll use our scratch paper over here on the side. 72 over 100, can we reduce that at all? We can get it to 36 over 50. And we can take that one step farther and get to 18 over 25. So our fraction here for number eight. 
It's 18 over 25. All right, last one. 67 hundredths is 67%. And our fraction is 67 over 100. Should give everybody a pretty good review of writing fractions as decimals and decimals as percents and percents as decimals and percents as fractions. So that'll really help us when we go on and talk in our next piece a little bit more about probability, just help us think about things in, in like terms. So we know that probability is the number of ways something can happen versus the total number of possible outcomes. So with that in mind, if I have a jar of 16 chocolates, 12 mints, and eight gumballs, and if I randomly pick one candy from the jar, what is the probability that that candy is a mint? Well, in the question, we know we had 16 chocolates, 12 mints, and eight gumballs. So how many total candy do I have? Because remember, we want to talk about the total number of possible outcomes. So I need to know how many candy I have in the jar, and that's the total number of possible outcomes. So what do we get if we add these up? Well, I know 12 and 8 is 20, and 16 more gives me 36. So I have the number of ways an event can happen. The event that we're talking about is choosing a mint. So I have 12 possible mints that I can pick out of my 36 candies. We know that we need to reduce this fraction down. Both of these numbers are divisible by what? We can work in half, so we can go reduce it by a factor of two get to 6 eighteenths and I could do that again and get to 3 ninths. I can't use 2 anymore but I know that both of those numbers are divisible by 3 so I get to 1 third. So the probability of choosing a mint is 1 out of 3. Good job. Nice job on that first one. Alright, so I have a closet with 7 footballs, 15 tennis balls, and six basketballs, if one ball is randomly pulled from the closet, what's the probability that it's a football? So we'll follow along as we did in number one. I have seven footballs, 15 tennis balls, and six basketballs. So my total is what? Seven and 15 is 22. 22 plus six more is 28. We're looking at football, so I have seven footballs out of my 28 total. You might quickly recognize that both of these numbers are divisible by seven, so I can reduce this down to one over four. One fourth. So now thinking back to the first slide, how would we describe the probability of choosing a football? Is it impossible? Is it likely? Is it unlikely? Is it certain that we'll choose a football? Well, one quarter I know is below 50%, but it's not zero. So we would say that it's unlikely. The probability of pulling a football is unlikely. A little bit of extension there from our first question. Yeah, nice job. All right, we'll go ahead and do the last one on this page. I've got a box that contains 16 plums, 14 peaches, and 20 apples. A lot of fruit. A lot of fruit in that box. If one is randomly pulled from the box, what's the probability that it's an apple? So we have our 16 plums, our 14 peaches, and our 20 apples. So how much total fruit do I have? 16 and 14 is 30, 20 more is 50. So we are looking at apples. So I have 20 out of 50 apples. We can reduce both these by a factor of 10, and I have 2 fifths, so the odds are 2 out of 5 of pulling an apple. Nicely done, everybody. Nice job. Let me know if this is something new that you're learning, or maybe it's some review from something you learned in school. We'd like to know if we're teaching you guys new stuff or if we're reviewing. 
Both are great. Just some good information for us. So go ahead and let me know in the comments which of those is for you. But we'll do a couple more here. And I just want to make sure that these are visible for you guys. There's a, there's a fair number of problems on this page. So let me know if you guys can read these. Okay, if not, I can go ahead and make them a little bit bigger. Let me think, is this too hard to read? Can't read it. Okay, that's what I was afraid of. I'm gonna go ahead and just make this one a little bit bigger. So give me just a second here. And we'll go ahead and make this page a little bit bigger for us. Okay. All right, that should be better. So we're talking about a die. We're talking about a regular die that has six sides. And if a one is thrown, if one die is thrown, what is the probability of rolling a five? So I have one die, just look in the picture there. I'm gonna throw it, what are the odds of rolling a five? Well, I know that a die has the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. And six sided die is numbered one through six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So my total number of outcomes is six. And I see the number five once. So I have one out of six likelihood that I will roll five. So what's the probability of rolling an even number? Well, again, I know that I have six possible outcomes, and the number of even numbers on a die, I've got two, four, six, that's three. But we need to reduce this fraction. Three, six is not the final answer. What is the probability of rolling less than a three? Well, I've got two numbers here that are less than three. Out of my six total possibilities. Again, we've got to reduce our fraction. Two sixths is the same as one third. All right, last question here. What is the probability of rolling a seven? What is the probability of rolling a seven? Well, again, I know I have six possibilities, but a seven's not on that list. No possibility, and that's not really the way we'd write that. We would just write zero, and how would we describe that? Is it likely, is it certain, is it unlikely? How do we describe 0% odds of getting an outcome? It's impossible. Good job. It's impossible to roll a seven on a six-sided die. Nicely done. Oh. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the next piece there that we wanted. All right, that should be pretty visible for everybody. The bag contains nine marbles numbered one through nine. If one marble is randomly selected from the bag, what is the probability of selecting a seven? So you can see I've got my nine marbles in the bag there, numbered one through nine. So I've got nine possible outcomes. 
and I have one marble labeled seven. So the favorable outcome is seven, which is once, and I have nine total possibilities, so it's one. What's the odds of selecting an odd number? What are the probabilities of selecting an odd number? Well, how many odd numbers do I have one through? I'll go ahead and write them out on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. How many odd numbers are there? I've got one, three, five, seven, nine, four. Out of my total possibilities, of nine, so the probability of selecting an odd number is four out of nine. Nice job. Very nicely done. Okay. Similar question. Oh, nope, you guys are right. There's five. I can't count. Good catch, good catch, good catch. All right. Probability of selecting a number greater than three. How many numbers do I have greater than three? Well, it would be from four on. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six numbers greater than three out of my nine total possibilities, but I've got to reduce this fraction down. Both of those numbers are divisible by three. So we can reduce that to two thirds. And we'd say that that is likely. We are likely to select a marble with a number Last one here, the probability of selecting a number less than 10. Well, let's just think about this one logically for a second. All of the marbles in my bag have a number less than 10. So no matter what happens, the marble that I select is going to have a number less than 10 on it. So how would I write that? We could do it fraction. We could say that it's certain, very nice. We could write it as a percent, or good, we could write it as a decimal. Certain. Nicely done. Okay, so let's talk a little bit now about probability without replacement. So this is going to be some Multi-step problems. So let's talk about if I have a bag that contains 10 red marbles. So we're back to our bag of marbles, except now they're colors instead of numbers. So I've got a bag with 10 marbles, 10 red marbles, eight white marbles, and six blue marbles. If a white marble is pulled from the bag and not put back, what is the probability of randomly selecting another white marble? So we have our 10 red marbles. We have our eight white marbles, but we take one out, which means I only have seven, and I still have my six blue marbles. So how many do I have all together now? Well, originally, originally we had 24, but if we took a white one out, we now have 23, right? So what's the probability of pulling another white marble? My total outcomes, I have 23 total outcomes, and I have seven white marbles left. So we could say that we have probability of pulling another white marble is seven out of 23. Let's do a couple more of those. So our refrigerator contains 10 bottles of water, seven bottles of apple juice, and 13 bottles of orange juice. The drink is randomly selected from the refrigerator. What is the probability that the drink is a bottle of water? So this is just kind of back to our normal probability. So we need to figure out our total number of potential outcomes. So I've got 10 and seven is 17 and 13 gives me 30. So right now we have 30 potential outcomes. And if we're talking about a bottle of water, we have 10. So we've got 10 out of 30. We can say that that's one third. That one reduces pretty nicely. So if that bottle of water was removed from the refrigerator and not replaced, so we took it out, drank the bottle of water, it's no longer in the refrigerator. It's not an option. What's the probability of selecting a bottle of orange juice? So now 
I've lost a bottle of water. I'm down to nine, which means that my total number of outcomes, potential outcomes, is down to 29. My number of bottles of orange juice, however, remain the same. So we're still looking at 13. So I have 13 bottles of orange juice out of my 29 drinks left in the refrigerator. And we can reduce this one down as well to nothing. Why can we not reduce that one? Because 13 is a prime number. Nice job. All right, so now we've got that bottle of water gone and the bottle of orange juice. So now lost a bottle of orange juice as well. So now I'm down to 28. 28 drinks left in the refrigerator. What is the probability of randomly selecting a drink that is not a bottle of water? What is the probability of selecting a drink that is not a bottle of water? What do we think? Well, I have seven bottles of apple juice, which is not water, and I have 12 bottles of orange juice. So all of the things that I have that are not water gives me 19 favorable outcomes out of my 28 total possible. So the probability of randomly selecting a drink that is not a bottle of water is 19. That one makes sense to everybody? Can be following along there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get one more set of questions in before we call it. So I've got a box with nine crayons that are orange, 13 gray crayons, and seven purple crayons, and 19 blue crayons. Lots of crayons here. If I randomly select a crayon from the box, what's the probability that it's blue? Well, we gotta know our total number Potential outcomes, so I've got 13 and 7 gives me 20. Adding on 19, I get to 39. 9 more gives me 48. So, we have 48 potential outcomes. So what's the probability that one of them is blue. 19. Nicely done. Can we reduce that at all? Can we reduce 19 out of 48? No, we cannot. And why is that? Those two numbers show no factors because 19 is prime. All right, so if we take that blue crayon out, we remove it, it's not replaced, what is the probability of then randomly selecting a gray crayon? So I've lost one of my blue, and we're looking for the probability of selecting a gray crayon. Now I have 47 potential outcomes. My number of gray stays intact. Fraction cannot be reduced. So I've got 13 out of 47. Very good, which we would say is unlikely. Nice job. Okay, so now I've taken out the blue crayon and I've taken out the gray crayon. So I'm down to 46. What is the probability of selecting a crayon that is not purple? So you want everything not purple. So I still have my nine orange crayons, I have my 12 gray crayons, and I have my 18 blue crayons. So I have 39 of my 46 crayons. That are not purple.
All right. So it seemed like a lot of people learned something new today, which is awesome. I'm super glad that you guys got to join. We definitely appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow or the next time you tune in for Mathnasium Schoolhouse. Thanks so much. And we'll see you guys next time. It's afternoons that seem to be the most hectic for us. So it was much more convenient when we found Mathnasium at home. All right, so how do we do half of five? I think one of the best things about at home is that it really feels like you're almost at home with the student in their house teaching them. I'm in my comfort zone. You can just ask for help and the instructor will come right to you. With Mathnasium at home, I know that they're getting the help that they need. Awesome, great job. Mathnasium, changing lives through math.